Hi, my name is Crystal Simmons, and I'm a Programs Coordinator with the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education, or ACHE for short. Thank you for joining me for the video on the Learning Outcomes Credit. This video is part of a series where ACHE staff highlight data quality tips and resources for credits in the latest version of the Sustainability Tracking Assessment and Rating System, which is STARS version 2.2. Today, I'm going to walk through everything you need to know to submit high quality and accurate content for AC2, the Learning Outcomes Credit. During this video, I'll be referencing a few different resources that will be helpful to you as you work on this credit. They are the Learning Outcomes information in the Technical Manual, the STARS 2.2 Review Template, the Reporting Tool, and this credit's Help Center article. If you're new to some of these resources, there is an article in the STARS Help Center that also features a helpful video which can be found under the basics. This credit recognizes institutions that have adopted sustainability learning outcomes, which helps students develop sustainability knowledge and skills and provide institutions and accrediting bodies with standards against which to assess student learning. The scoring for this credit is unique in that part one and part two of the credit are scored together, so an institution can earn the maximum number of eight points in a number of ways. Just a note before our review the summary of issues with this credit, we encourage institutions to pay close attention to this credit because it's part of our standard review and it has one of the highest error rates in STARS. We've also found that revisions to this credit in particular can be very time consuming for institutions, so please review credit criteria closely and check for the following issues before submitting. You can find a summary of issues in one of two locations, either this credit's Help Center article or the STARS 2.2 review template. For this video, I'll be using the review template. There are several common issues outlined in the review template that we typically see with this credit. The first two involve data outliers, a score outlier and a numeric outlier. If an institution is earning full points or close to it, we always check for justification. Sometimes the outlier can be attributed to exemplary performance. However, in other cases, institutions have misinterpreted the credit criteria. If you're earning close to full points, we encourage you to look closely at each of the following issues. In part two, if an institution is claiming more than 70% of students have graduated from programs that have adopted at least one sustainability learning outcome, please check to be sure that the courses, programs, and learning outcomes are classified correctly as sustainability focused. I'll tease this out more in a bit. Data outliers are sometimes the result of counting learning outcomes that shouldn't be included, which is the next issue I'll cover. Learning outcomes don't necessarily have to use the term sustainability, but they do need to have an explicit focus on the interdependence of ecological systems and social or economic systems. A common mistake is listing an outcome as sustainability focused when it doesn't cover ecological dimensions of sustainability. Another common issue we see is referencing programs that don't focus on the interdependence of sustainability dimensions. For example, a general ed program that requires a natural sciences course and a social sciences course that separately cover the ecological and social dimensions of sustainability wouldn't count. There is one exception to this under version 2.2. Institutions can now earn partial points under part one for learning outcomes that are supportive of sustainability but not explicitly focused on sustainability. The standards and terms section of the credit language includes a detailed definition as well as several examples of sustainability supportive learning outcomes. Since this is new under version 2.2, I'll give you an example. Looking at HE Test Campus, we see that the institution has indicated that they have sustainability supportive learning outcomes that cover most but not all students. The statement that students will develop an understanding of their social responsibility as future professionals and citizens does indeed qualify as a supportive learning outcome, so partial points can be earned under part one. Another issue we sometimes see involves referencing something other than formal learning outcomes general program overview statements, strategic plans, mission or vision statements, or similar types of pieces are not sufficient because they outline intentions for the course program or institution rather than expectations of what the students will learn. In addition, the learning outcomes listed under part one must apply to the entire or predominant student body. 
Listing outcomes that cover all undergraduate students, if this represents the majority of students, is fine. However, listing outcomes that only cover one division or a small portion of students is not sufficient. Another issue I'll mention relates to how programs can be counted in part two. In order to count, programs must meet one of three criteria. Programs are identified as sustainability focused under AC3 undergraduate program or AC4 graduate program or programs have adopted one or more sustainability focused learning outcomes that reference the interdependence of ecological systems and social or economic systems or number three programs require successful completion of a sustainability focused course as identified in ac1 academic courses if claiming programs under this third option it's important to keep in mind that graduates from programs that make such courses optional to complete the major or only require sustainability related courses as reported under ac1 should be excluded if this is something you think your institution might want to do i'd encourage you to check out how southern oregon university and the university of central florida documented this approach both of these examples can be found in this credits help center article Referring to HE Test Campus again, we can see that sustainability focused academic programs were counted, and the methodology shows that students graduating from these programs were counted. One final issue that I'll mention for the learning outcomes credit also falls under part two. The figure reported for total number of graduates from degree programs must reflect all students that graduate. A common mistake we often see is overlooking students graduating from graduate programs. As a reminder, the HE Help Center credit article is a great resource for finding answers to frequently asked questions on this credit, as well as example responses from other institutions. So to recap, the common issues to keep in mind under this credit are score and numeric outliers, using a different definition for sustainability-focused learning outcomes, referencing learning outcomes that are not focused on student learning, Referencing institutional level learning outcomes that don't cover all students, counting programs that don't meet the credit criteria, and not reporting all graduates from all parts of the institution. Thank you for watching. If you have any issues, please post in the STARS community or reach out to stars at We are happy to help. Thanks and best wishes on your STARS journey.